Tonight, Country Music Hall of Famer Alan Jackson is opening up about his rare nerve disorder. He says he has Charcot-Marie Tooth Disease. It's a disorder that damages nerves in the arms. Whose voice is so radiant that it echoes through the hearts of millions? Whose melodies paint vivid pictures of life, love, and the American spirit? It is none other than the iconic Alan Jackson. Kept a picture on his wall when half crazy now and then. From humble beginnings to becoming an iconic figure in country music, his songs have woven themselves into the fabric of American songwriting, capturing the essence of a nation with every heartfelt note. Join us and let's get into the undeniable talent and timeless story of Alan Jackson a legend whose music resonates with the very soul of America. The power of a legend. Meet Alan Eugene Jackson, the extraordinary American singer-songwriter. Jackson has left an indelible mark on the music industry that even the birds and their orchestra will never cease to sing his praises. His distinctive style known as neo-traditional country is equal to none, made anew in every hit that rocks the street. But he isn't just a performer. Jackson is also a talented songwriter, penning many of his songs from a very creative vantage so admirable. But here in the real world. With an impressive discography, Jackson has recorded an incredible 21 studio albums, including not one, but two Christmas albums and two gospel albums. And if that's not enough, he has also blessed us with three greatest hit albums that showcase his incredible talent. Alan Jackson is not just a household name, but one of the best-selling music artists of all time. His records have sold over 75 million copies worldwide, with a jaw-dropping 44 million sold in the United States alone. When it comes to topping the charts, Jackson knows how to do it right. He's had a mind-blowing 66 songs appear on the Billboard Hot Country Singles and Tracks chart. Of those 66 titles, including six featured singles, an astounding 38 have reached the top five. And get this, 35 of his songs have claimed the coveted number one spot. Alan Jackson's talent has not gone unnoticed. He's received two Grammy Awards, 16 Country Music Association CMA Awards, and 17 Academy of Country Music Awards, fortifying his status as a true musical icon. He's also been nominated for numerous other prestigious accolades, showcasing the immense respect he has garnered from his peers. In recognition of his incredible contributions to the world of music, Jackson is a proud member of the Grand Ole Opry. He was inducted into the Georgia Music Hall of Fame 2001, and in 2017, the Country Music Hall of Fame welcomed him with open arms, as he was inducted by none other than the legendary Loretta Lynn. You know, the first time I ever met Alan and seen Alan, he, was, he looked like a scared little boy. Uh, he was uh, practicing backstage. As if that's not enough, in 2018, the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame honored him with a well-deserved induction, Voice of the Chronicles. Alan Jackson's roots can be traced back to Noonan, Georgia, where he was born into a loving family on the 17th of October in 1978. His parents, Joseph Eugene Daddy Jean Jackson and Ruth Music Mama Ruth Jackson, provided a nurturing home for Alan and his four older sisters. Their modest dwelling was built around his grandfather's old tool shed, adding a touch of charm to their surroundings. With a strong English heritage, Alan's upbringing was filled with a connection to his roots. His mother, Mama Ruth, continued to live in their family home until her passing on January 7, 1017, leaving behind cherished memories. During his formative years, Allen attended Elm Street Elementary and later Noonan High School, where he pursued his education. Following graduation, he joined the band Dixie Steel, showcasing his musical talents even at a young age. The Spark. Cradle Jackson discovered his musical talent pretty much early and began hitting his shot as early as 1983 when he started writing his own songs. As a songwriter, you always hear little pieces or hooks or something that sound like a song and you write them down or you get a melody in your head and you record it. While he initially immersed himself in gospel music, his musical horizons expanded when a friend introduced him to the sounds of Gene Watson, John Anderson, 
and Hank Williams Jr. This exposure so much caught his interest that he lent his voice for a switch. This encounter ignited a deep passion for country music within Allen. At the age of 27, he made a bold move. Together with his wife Denise, whom he had been married to for six years, he relocated from Noonan to Nashville, Tennessee. It was a leap of faith as he aimed to immerse himself fully in the music industry and pursue his dreams. In 1987, Allen took a significant step toward his great emergence as an icon in the music industry. What did he do? Jackson recorded a demo album titled New Traditional at Doc's Place in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Although this album had a limited release and is now considered a rare gem, it marked the beginning of Allen's musical journey, captivating audiences not just in his home country, but even reaching listeners in faraway Japan. Beginning the Journey Now let's fast forward to Tennessee, where Alan Jackson's journey took an exciting turn. It was there that he landed his first job in the Nashville Network's mailroom, a humble beginning for a future country music superstar. Meanwhile, his wife Denise worked as a flight attendant, but fate had an unexpected encounter in store for her. During one of her flights, Denise crossed paths with none other than the legendary Glenn Campbell. She saw this as an opportunity to seek advice for her talented husband. In a stroke of luck, Campbell handed her his manager's business card and encouraged her to make the call. Little did they know, this would be the pivotal moment that jump-started Alan's career. She was in the right place and at the right time. With newfound hope and guidance, Alan eventually caught the attention of Arista Records. In 1989, he became the first artist signed to the newly formed Arista Nashville branch. The label wasted no time in releasing Alan's record single, Blue-Blooded Woman, later that year. While the song didn't quite crack the top 40 on the Hot Country Songs chart, Alan's breakthrough came in early 1990 with his smash hit, Here in the Real World, which reached an impressive number three. Here in the Real World also served as the title track for Alan's debut studio album, which also made a huge cultural impact. The album featured two more top five hits, Wanted and Chasing That Neon Rainbow, and his very first number one hit, I'd Love You All Over Again. The stage was set for Alan Jackson's rise to country music stardom, Record Breaker. In 1991, Alan released his second album, aptly named Don't Rock the Jukebox. This album solidified his position as a chart topper, boasting four number one singles, the title track, Someday, Dallas, and Love's Got a Hold on You. The album also featured the heartfelt ballad Midnight in Montgomery, which reached number three on the charts. Not only was Alan making his mark as a solo artist, but he also co-wrote several songs on Randy Travis's acclaimed album, High Lonesome. The momentum continued with Alan's third album, A Lot About Livin', and A Little About Love. This album delivered more chart-topping success with hits like She's Got the Rhythm and I Got the Blues, and the iconic Chattahoochee, which not only reached number one, but also earned him the prestigious 1994 Country Music Association, CMA, awards for single and song of the year. Telling you what, who is it gonna be? Alan Jackson! That same year, Alan made a change in his management, transitioning to Gary Overton. This marked a new chapter in his career. His fourth album, appropriately titled Who I Am, continued his winning streak with four more number one hits. A rocking cover of Eddie Cochran's Summertime Blues, followed by Livin' on Love, Gone Country, and I Don't Even Know Your Name. Additionally, his rendition of Rodney Crowell's Song for the Life reached number six on the charts. Allen's influence extended beyond the music scene. In 1996, he made a memorable appearance on the popular TV show Home Improvement, performing Mercury Blues in the episode titled When Harry Kept Dolores. He was truly making his mark in multiple facets of entertainment. A momentous period in his journey. Stories of legends like Alan Jackson will never be complete without looking into key moments in their lives that shaped the glory we celebrate today. Let's dive into the mid to late 1990s, a pivotal period in Alan Jackson's career. In 1995, he treated fans to the Greatest Hits Collection. This album was a treasure trove of 17 chart-topping hits, including two newly recorded songs, I'll Try and Tall, Tall Trees. But that's not all. 
Alan surprised everyone by including Home, a track from his earlier album Here in the Real World that had never been released as a single. Both of the new songs quickly climbed to number one, further solidifying Alan's status as a country music superstar. The success continued with his 1996 album Everything I Love. The album's first single, Little Bitty, penned by the talented Tom T. Hall, reached the pinnacle of the charts, giving Alan another number one hit. The album also featured the catchy There Goes, which also claimed the top spot, and a fantastic cover of Charlie McLean's 1980 single, Who's Cheatin' Who, reaching number two. However, not every song on the album found the same level of success. A House With No Curtains, the fifth single, missed the top ten, making it Alan's first release since 1989 to do so. But hey, even the greatest artists have their ups and downs. In 1998, Alan released High Mileage, and it kicked off with the infectious number four hit, I'll Go On Loving You. The album's standout track, Right On The Money, co-written by Phil Vassar and Charlie Black, became Alan's only number one hit from that album. It's always a thrill to see an artist's hard work pay off with a chart-topping success. In 1999, Alan took a bold step with his album, Under the Influence. While the airwaves were dominated by rock and pop-tinged sounds, Alan decided to honor the country classics by releasing an album of covers. It was a double risk, covering beloved songs while maintaining a traditional sound. This move showcased Alan's deep respect for the genre's roots and his commitment to staying true to his style. During the 1999 Country Music Association, CMA Awards, the organization asked the legendary George Jones to trim his performance to 90 seconds. In a show of solidarity, Alan decided to make a powerful statement. He interrupted his song, surprising everyone, and launched into George Jones's iconic track, Choices. It was a courageous act, and Alan walked off stage, making a statement about the importance of honoring country music legends. Life in the year 2000s. During this time, there was a noticeable shift in the sound of country music, leaning more towards a pop-oriented style. Alan Jackson, along with George Strait, expressed their dissatisfaction with this trend in their song, Murder on Music Row. The song sparked a lively debate within the country music community about the state of traditional country music. It raised questions about whether the genre was losing its essence or not. Interestingly, Murder on Music Row wasn't officially released as a single, but it still made waves. It became the highest charting no seasonal album cut to appear on hot country singles and tracks in the broadcast data systems era. This accomplishment surpassed the previous record held by Garth Brooks's Bellow Wood. The impact of the song was evident when Alan and George were invited to open the 2000 Academy of Country Music Awards, ACMAs, with a performance of the tune, highlighting its significance in the country music landscape. Critics took note of Alan Jackson's style as well. Rolling Stone commented on his concerts, comparing them to the elaborate productions of Garth Brooks and Shania Twain. Alan's performances were described as bringing the bar back to a more human level, emphasizing the authenticity and simplicity of his shows. Following the tragic events of September 11, 2001, Alan released a heartfelt tribute song titled Where Were You When the World Stopped Turning? The country, soft rock ballad resonated with listeners and thrust Allen into the mainstream spotlight. He debuted the song at the 2000 CMA Awards, and his performance was widely regarded as the highlight of the show. The emotional impact of the song was so profound that it received immediate radio airplay and was later released as a single. The response was overwhelming, to the point where Allen's website crashed due to a surge in server requests. In 2002, Alan released his second Christmas album, titled Let It Be Christmas. He also collaborated with Jeannie Kendall on the song Timeless and True Love, which appeared on her solo album released in 2003. Additionally, Alan ventured into gospel music with his album Precious Memories in the early 2006. This project was a personal endeavor, as it was inspired by his mother's love for religious music. Although initially considered a side project, the album exceeded expectations and sold over 1.8 million units. Continuing his musical exploration, Alan released Like Red on a Rose a few months later. Originally intended as a bluegrass album, 
It took a different direction with Alison Krauss as the producer. Departing from his neo-traditional country style, the album embraced a soft rock adult contemporary sound. While it received critical acclaim, some fans felt that Alan had deviated from his signature style for a more commercial pop sound. Despite the controversy, Alan returned to his country roots with his next album, Good Time, released on March 4, 2008. The album featured singles such as Small Town Southern Man, Country Boy, Good Time, Sissy's Song, and I Still Like Bologna. Sissy's Song was a heartfelt tribute to Leslie Sissy Fitzgerald, a close friend of the Jackson family who tragically passed away in a motorcycle accident in 2007. His 20th studio album. In 2010, Allen released his 16th studio album, Freight Train. The album featured the singles It's Just That Way and Hard Hat and a Hammer. It's Just That Way debuted at number 50 on the charts in January 2010, while Hard Hat and a Hammer followed as the album's second single in May of the same year. Later in 2010, Allen released another greatest hits package titled 34 Number Ones. This compilation album included a cover of Johnny Cash's hit Ring of Fire and a duet with Zac Brown Band called As She's Walking Away. It showcased the enduring appeal of Allen's music and his ability to collaborate with other talented artists. In the early 2011, Allen and his record label Arista Nashville parted ways, and he announced a new deal with Capitol's EMI Records Nashville in March of that year. The new partnership was a joint venture between Allen's own label, ACR, Allen's Country Records, and Capitol's EMI Records Nashville label. This marked a new chapter in his career and provided a fresh platform for his music. In 2012, Allen released his album, 30 Miles West. The album featured three singles, Long Way to Go, So You Don't Have to Love Me Anymore, and You Go Your Way. While none of the singles reached the top 20 on the charts, they showcased Allen's continued dedication to creating heartfelt and relatable music. He embarked on a tour in 2013 to support the album and connect with his fans. Allen's passion for exploring different musical genres led him to release a gospel album titled Precious Memories Volume 2 in 2013. He followed this with his first and, so far, only bluegrass album, simply titled The Bluegrass Album. The album featured two singles, Blue Ridge Mountain Song and Blacktop, and achieved chart success, reaching number one on the Billboard Top Bluegrass Albums chart and number three on the country chart. In 2014, the Country Music Hall of Fame honored Alan Jackson with an exhibit celebrating his 24 years in the music industry. The exhibit showcased significant milestones in his career and displayed memorabilia collected over the years. As part of the celebration, Allen performed shows as an artist in residency at the Country Music Hall of Fame. Allen's 25th anniversary, Keeping It Country Tour, kicked off in 2015, followed by the announcement of his 20th studio album, Angels and Alcohol, in April of the same year. The album was released in July and continued to showcase his talent and dedication to the country music genre. In 2016, Allen was selected as one of 30 artists to perform on Forever Country, a special mashup track that celebrated 50 years of the CMA Awards. The track combined the songs Take Me Home, Country Roads, On the Road Again, and I Will Always Love You, showcasing the rich history and enduring appeal of country music. Allen extended his Keeping It Country tour in 2016 and 2017, with American Idol alumna Lauren Elena joining him as a special guest. In August 2016, Legacy Recordings released Genuine, The Alan Jackson Story, a comprehensive collection featuring 59 tracks, including eight previously unreleased tracks dedicated to the memory of Merle Haggard. Then, in October 2017, Allen released a new song titled The Older I Get, hinting at a future studio album. Four years later, in 2021, he released the album Where Have You Gone? The record showcased an even harder, more traditional country sound, with Allen expressing his concern that the genre was disappearing and unlikely to return. Alan Jackson's career has been defined by his ability to captivate audiences with his authentic storytelling and unwavering commitment to country music. 
His willingness to explore different styles and push the boundaries of the genre has made him a revered figure in the industry. With each new release, he continues to leave a lasting impact on the world of country music. His personal life. Alan Jackson's personal life has had its ups and downs, but it's also filled with love, family, and cherished friendships. He married his high school sweetheart, Denise Jackson, on December 15, 1979. Together, they have three daughters, Maddie Denise Seligman, Alexandra Jane Ali, and Danny Grace. In December 2022, Alan and Denise became proud grandparents when their daughter Ali and her husband welcomed their first child, a son. Like any relationship, Alan and Denise faced challenges. In 1998, they separated for several months due to the pressures of Alan's career and his infidelity. However, they eventually reconciled and worked through their differences, finding a way back to each other. Denise Jackson wrote a book titled, It's All About Him, Finding the Love of My Life, which became a New York Times bestseller. The book delves into her life with Alan, their relationship, the struggles they faced during their separation, and their renewed commitment to each other. Denise's strong Christian faith played a significant role in their journey. Alan's family connections extend beyond his immediate household. His nephew, Adam Wright, is a country music singer-songwriter who performs with his wife, Shannon, in a duo called The Wrights. They co-wrote songs and provided harmony vocals on Alan's album, What I Do. Additionally, Alan is a cousin of former Major League Baseball player Brandon Moss, showcasing the diverse talents within his family. Throughout his career, Alan Jackson formed close friendships with other country music legends. He shared a special bond with George Jones, as evident in songs like Don't Rock the Jukebox and Murder on Music Row. George even appeared in the music video for Don't Rock the Jukebox. Alan's friendship with George Strait is also noteworthy, and they performed together on the powerful track Murder on Music Row. Despite these associations with big stars, Alan remains grounded and connected to his roots and old friends. At George Jones's funeral service in 2013, Alan paid tribute to his dear friend by performing one of Jones's classics, He Stopped Loving Her Today. This heartfelt gesture showcased their deep bond and the immense respect Alan had for George. Outside of music, Alan Jackson is an avid classic car collector. His impressive collection includes notable vehicles such as an Amphicar, a 1968 Shelby GT 500 KR convertible, and a 1970 Chevelle SS 396. In a 2021 appearance on The Today Show, Alan bravely shared that he has Charcot Marie Tooth Disease, CMT, a condition that has been affecting him for years. He acknowledged that it's becoming more evident and affecting his balance, even while performing on stage. His openness about his health struggles further highlights his authenticity and resilience as he continues to bring his music to fans around the world. Touring Concerts Alan Jackson's concert tours have been nothing short of spectacular, solidifying his status as one of country music's most captivating live performers. From massive sponsorship deals to headline acts at renowned music festivals, his tours have drawn in legions of fans eager to experience his incredible talent firsthand. In 1995, Jackson embarked on the Fruit of the Loom Comfort Tour, a groundbreaking deal worth a staggering $40 million. The tour kicked off in New Orleans on January 20 and spanned an impressive 100 dates across the country. This partnership showcased Jackson's immense popularity and established him as a force to be reckoned with in the music industry. Continuing his tradition of high-profile tours, Alan Jackson's 2004 concert tour took off on January 23 in Fort Myers, Florida with Napa Auto Parts as the proud sponsor. The deal not only included sponsorship for the tour, but also featured Jackson's endorsement in television commercials. With over 50 dates across the United States, the tour allowed fans from coast to coast to experience the magic of Alan Jackson's live performances. Adding to the excitement, acclaimed artist Martina McBride joined Jackson as the opening act for some of the shows, creating an unforgettable night of country music. In March 2011, Jackson took his talents overseas to Australia, where he headlined the CMC Rocks the Hunter Music Festival. As the highlight act for Saturday night, he delivered an electrifying performance, 
captivating the international audience with his signature sound. This international venture showcased the universal appeal of Alan Jackson's music and the global reach of his star power. In March 2022, Alan Jackson made a bittersweet announcement. He revealed his farewell tour, aptly named the One More for the Road Tour. This tour promises to be a poignant and emotional journey for both Jackson and his fans, as they bid farewell to an icon who has shaped the country music landscape for decades. It's an opportunity for fans to come together and celebrate the incredible career of a true legend before he takes his final bow. Alan Jackson's live performances have always been a testament to his artistry, charisma, and ability to captivate audiences. From groundbreaking tours with multi-million dollar deals to international festival headlining acts, his live shows have left an indelible mark on the world of country music. As he embarks on his farewell tour, fans can expect a heartfelt and unforgettable experience, cherishing the memories created by a true musical icon. Public honors and accolades. Alan Jackson's career has been marked by numerous accolades and honors, showcasing his immense talent and impact on the country music scene. In 1989, he received six nominations at the prestigious Country Music Association Awards, CMAs, a testament to his rising prominence in the industry. This early recognition set the stage for his future success. The year 1994 proved to be a particularly noteworthy one for Jackson. He earned four CMA nominations, including a coveted nod for Entertainer of the Year. This recognition solidified his status as one of the genre's leading figures, and fans eagerly anticipated his next moves. Joining the esteemed ranks of the Grand Ole Opry was a significant milestone in Alan Jackson's career. In 1991, he was inducted into the Opry by legendary artists Roy Acuff and Randy Travis. This prestigious honor acknowledged his contributions to country music and further cemented his place among the genre's elite. The 29th annual TNN Music City News Country Awards held at the Grand Ole Opry House showcased Jackson's dominance in the industry. He emerged as the most nominated artist of the evening, receiving six nominations across multiple categories, including Best Entertainer, Male Artist, Vocal Collaboration, Album, Single, and Video. This impressive feat only added to his growing legacy and solidified his position as a powerhouse in the country music world. This is the perfect time. We headed out to the Ford Theater at the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum for the latest news from Alan Jackson. In 2002, Alan Jackson made history by setting a record for the most nominations in a single year at the CMAs. His extraordinary talent and the soaring popularity of his song, Where Were You?, earned him a staggering 10 nominations. This remarkable achievement brought his career total to the second highest number of nominations ever, second only to the legendary George Strait. The song Where Were You even garnered a Grammy nomination for Song of the Year, further highlighting its impact and resonance. Jackson's influence and recognition extended beyond music awards. In 2004, his hometown of Noonan honored him by renaming a five-mile stretch of Interstate 85 as the Allen Jackson Highway. Humble in his response, Jackson playfully remarked that perhaps a dirt road would have been a more fitting tribute. Nevertheless, this gesture showcased the deep respect and admiration his community held for him. The state of Georgia also recognized Allen Jackson's immense contributions to the music industry. In 2000, he was inducted into the Georgia Music Hall of Fame in Atlanta, solidifying his status as a local legend. His impact reached even greater heights when he received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2010, proof of his enduring influence and universal appeal. The pinnacle of recognition came in 2017, when Alan Jackson was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. This prestigious honor celebrated his outstanding career, exceptional talent, and lasting impact on the genre. It served as a testament to his enduring legacy and his place among country music's most revered icons. Alan Jackson's journey in the world of country music has been filled with remarkable achievements and well-deserved recognition. From his early nominations and induction into the Grand Ole Opry, to his record-breaking years and prestigious Hall of Fame inductions, he has left an indelible mark on the industry. Thank you and see you in the next video.